especially I love the part in which you compare induction and deduction. It looks uh, very illustrating. But that's a very general question. Uh, your assumption is uh, induction is very important, uh, very essential for AGI. That's right. But what about abduction? Abduction is also very essential for AGI, but you did not say anything about it. Well, okay. Um, there's a lots of things which I haven't talked about. I mean, if you look at <laughs> what intelligence, I don't think so. Is, what is usually associated with intelligence? Say creativity, generalization, um, pattern recognition. There are lots of things which I have not talked about, and they, if the claim that I see is general, general intelligence. And then there must be emergent phenomena. Yeah. Okay, so now with abduction, it's um, induction to an explanation. Yeah. Um, so what is an explanation? In a very abstract sense, and I see it's very abstract, it's a speech act. Yeah? I do some action, namely moving my mouth and this producing sound waves which explain something. So for me, or for Ixi, Abduction is no different from actual decision making or um, prediction. Um, it is if you train the system such that it is rewarded by talking back to you in a way that you feel that this is an explanation of something, then this system will do it. So from this abstract perspective, abduction is just prediction or action. I mean, if you go anything a little bit more sort of concrete, you know, and you want to implement the system, then of course, I mean, like the interface um, systems like speech recognition, vision, and um, motorics, you need special purpose modules. And maybe you need a special purpose module for, for abduction, yeah? but um, I believe that these, these modules have to be sort of well integrated and, and a lot of parts of these modules have to be learned also with the system. And so in principle, in theory, the system will learn to do abduction and all the other systems. In practice, probably you have to sort of put that. Okay, say more. Yeah. Right. So. My question is, uh, there is some asymmetry from the ordinary perspective between decision making and uh, abduction. For example, uh, I have the phenomena that uh, the floor of, uh, or the ground of Beijing city is wet, the phenomena to be explained. And the explanation is it rained yesterday. So that the past tense. I need a hypothesis that happened in the past experience, the current event. But the decision making or prediction is always towards something uh, to be done in the future. We will use another future tense. So I think there is some asymmetry between two. So first, I mean, prediction does not necessarily have to refer to the future in a narrow sense. So for instance, say, I could try to predict whether if I dig down here, I will find um, dinosaur bones or something, right? And then I find them or not. So then I have predicted a past event that there lived dinosaurs here or not. Yeah? Um, I guess that's the only thing I have to say about it. Um, I, I, I maybe one more thing. Um, at least I am interested in systems which do something, which can interact, right? And on this level, giving me explanations or predicting past events, these are all just actions. And in this sense, it is about the future sort of and the past or and about explanations. That's not really contradictory. I also have a question to Marcus. So I like your slide where you give a uh, like a universal AGI formula where is a maximization of the fitness like of, among different algorithms. But um, from practical point, it seems like uh, this won't work given limited time and resources because you need to try all different algorithms to handle particular scenario or particular case. So do you have any thoughts or recommendations about uh, how to handle the situation in the real world? Like we have a limited time and we need somehow to pick 
particular set, at least uh, not, uh, to, to, not to try all algorithms, but have just few or a couple of them to try in particular situation. What would be the practical considerations? Thank you. So we'll spend quite some time on Saturday on that. And indeed, meanwhile, so the first five years, 2000, I invented the model. And then the first five years, I just concentrated on the theory. Um, but meanwhile, um, we have constructed several and others, several approximations. And there are some more theoretically inspired approximations based on universal Levin search, which is the optimal algorithm for all kinds of problems within a multiplicated constant, which is ridiculously large. Yeah? So, um, you can't use it in practice, although Jürgen Schmidt-Huber has, um, with this idea, has done some practical work. Yeah. And then there are more practical approaches where um, we approximated the mixture of all computable environments by so-called um, suffix trees. Um, there's an algorithm called context tree weighting, which is a Bayesian mixture over double exponentially many environments which you can compute in linear time. So it's quite, I mean, on the one side, it is quite limited if you look at it from an AGI perspective. But if you look at it from a compression, practical compression perspective, it's very powerful. It's comparable to currently best available compressors. And we use that for mixing over the environments. And then for the, um, for the search part, for the expected max search, um, we used some ideas from, uh, from Computer Go, which in 2006, have been invented by um, the um, a group in Canada, um, where you do two things. The first thing, the expectation you estimate by sampling. And then at the end, you do some rollout policy to get a larger horizon. So these are some tricks we just took there, which are very generic. And with this, we are now able, um, so we have implemented the system, and we can play tic-tac-toe, um, Pac-Man, a simple form, a very simple form of poker. I mean, these are not very impressive domains, but the point is it's the same agent, so one agent which is able to learn by itself <laughs> without even giving the rules of the game. Just, you know, you have the usual feedback and you give positive data to breathe These three and other toy matrix games, very different games from scratch, which is, I think, going in the right direction. I'm not sure if it was if it is a technical question, so I'm now asking it Ben and Pei about consistency. Do you have any working definition what consistency is? Because, for instance, for for AGI system or any complex system, if I think if if, if an AGI system doesn't crash, we, we could say it is consistent. Yes, or with the best example, if you if you place your very intelligent system in alien world, it, it would become inconsistent for some time, but after some quite a long time of learning, it would again become consistent. So the question is, do you have a great working definition of what consistency is anything different than just not crashing? Yeah? Yeah, from the standpoint of the talk that I gave today, talking about use of probability versus other potential methods to measure plausibility, I was taking the definition of consistency from Cox's axioms and the various other axiomatic derivations of the probability theory. And there's a number of axioms there, but the, the cognitively trickiest one essentially means that if, if there are multiple pathways to derive the same conclusion, each of them will lead the same truth value to get assigned to that conclusion. So kind of all, all routes to derive the thing yield, yield the same truth value. And that, that is a mathematical conception of, of consistency that has emerged from the formal study of, of probability and other uncertainty measures. I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't claim that that follows that that encapsulates the intuitive notion of consistency fully, but I think it's, it's, it's somewhere in the right vicinity, because consistency means multiple things are, are all the same, and this is like multiple paths to get to the same goal give, give the same answer. And if 
I mean, if you really want to formalize that in the concept of a real agent in a real world, I mean, you could you, you could probably do that by looking at different, very very similar situations. But that's uh, that that's the working definition from the point of view of thinking about the applicability of probability to AI. Anyhow, yeah, I'm basically using the same working definition. That is, uh, for the same statement in a system, if you try to derive a conclusion about it from different paths, whether you assign the diff the same truth value. If you always, you can guarantee you always assign the same truth value for the same statement is consistent. Otherwise, it's not. Yeah, I, I would say if if you were dealing with an AI system that isn't explicitly logic based, you could re, you could reformulate the same thing in various ways, like the the probability of it carrying out a certain action in a in a certain context would, would would be the same based on the presentation of different evidence in different orders or something. I mean, you could. You, you could reorient that, you could restructure and reformulate that, that definition in a way that's purely behavioral based on the evidence the system sees and the action the system takes. If I may, that's exactly what I wanted to comment on or ask sort of, Ben, um, how relevant is consistency and how is it defined if it's not logic based and many systems like a neural network, there is no logic in there and do we then really need consistency? I assume you have a neural network and you know if it's in this mood it outputs this and if it's in another mood it outputs this, who cares, right? Yeah, they, I mean the problem with logic is if you have an inconsistency you can prove everything and then everything breaks down. But that is not the case if you have inconsistencies in other ways, right? Well, first of all, that, that depends on the logic, as you probably know. There's a whole field of paraconsistent logics and in the logic systems that Pei and I are using that is avoided by the control mechanism. So in either PLN or in NARS, you can have a local inconsistency that actually isn't propagated to, to, the, whole, to the whole knowledge base because of, of slightly different reasons in the two cases. But anyway, but both of our systems can tolerate local inconsistency. So the, the system could have a logical inconsistency about whether it loves its girlfriend or not without, without concluding the 2 plus 2 equals 7, just, just, just as, a, as a human could. But I think that the, the definition of inconsistency that comes from Cox's axioms and similar derivations of probability could be reformulated in terms of a system receiving input or evidence from the world in different orders and then does it, does it take the same actions with, with the same probabilities. I, I mean there, there would be some work to be done but I think, I think you could reformulate those in terms of the same formal agent model that, that, that's used in, in your own work on, on AXE. Okay, but you have explained now how you can make a logical inconsistent system still work here by power consistency and so on. But the, I had the reverse question sort of, um, is there any non-logical system where inconsistency, whatever that exactly means, is a problem? I think that you have to distinguish between the logic implicit in the system's behaviors and whatever is going on inside the system. Because if you look at the evidence observed by the system and then the system's probability of taking certain actions, I think those have got to be consistent for the system not to be stupid. On, on the other hand, what happens inside the system's mind need not be describable in in terms of, of logic, at least I'm not sure that it needs to be describable in terms of logic. It could be some some weird nonlinear dynamical system of a neural net or evolutionary algorithm or something totally different. But as long as it was consistent in the probabilities of its behaviors based on the order of presentation of its evidence, you consider it consistent externally as an observed system. Uh, <clears throat> In, for a neural network, I would say that maybe uh, consistency can be defined in terms of convergence. For example, if the system persists in a bad behavior consistently, then maybe becomes, it, it can be said to be inconsistent. Um, yeah? Well, I have a question to Marcus. Uh, you mentioned uh, about uh, free lunch theorem and uh, its uh, irrelevance uh, because it uh, is based on unrealistic uh, 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 uniformity assumptions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, such uh, methods as uh, Levin search are Pareto optimal, and uh, this optimality also uh, 
assumes uh, some universal assumption uh, about uh, different environments. Uh, so, uh, can you uh, say the same thing about uh, uh, Levin's search as uh, you said about uh, no free lunch theorem? Um, I'm not sure whether I understand the intention of the question. So, I, I, I mean, I, I definitely cannot say the same thing about um, Levin's search, what I can say, or what others have said about the no free lunch theorem, because, I mean, the no free lunch theorem is there, right? And this does not hold for, actually, I'm not exactly sure how to phrase it in terms of Levin's search, but in terms of, say, Solomonov's prior, right? I mean, there is a free lunch for Solomonov's prior. So we have a paper about that actually, um, one or two years ago, and um, so does it answer your question, or maybe your question was about how can I justify this different kind of assumption which I make with Solomonov, or uh, yes, uh, the question uh, was uh, uh, that uh, what's the real difference uh, between. Uh, Mm, no free lunch theorem uh, because it is uh, based on uh, uniformity assumption and uh, uh, more weakly uh, some of the uh, prayers uh, are optimal also in sense of uh, uh, that uh, different environments uh, uh, can be encountered uh, but uh, uh, is it relevant uh, to practice? Well, it is definitely relevant for the question whether any systems are possible at all. If the assumptions in the no free lunch theorem were true, then the theorem would say, essentially, interpreting it, AGI is not possible. Okay? So what now, we look at the real world, and the real world is not wide noise, so the assumption is wrong. And the question is, can we replace it with something which is more realistic, but still not biased towards very particular situations? And that is what Occam's razor gives us. It is a bias towards simplicity. And a bias towards simplicity is not a bias towards any particularly interesting problem. Yes, it is a bias towards problems which are generically interesting, no, not to specific problems. And that is what Solomonov prior does. And um, there is a nice relation between the uniformity assumption and Solomonov's distribution. So if you take a uniform prior on the input table on a universal Turing machine, and you look, ask what distribution you get on the output tape, then you get Solomonov's distribution. Yeah. So you can say Solomonov's assumption is that someone, say God, has created uniform random noise, but then he piped it through a universal Turing machine to make something interesting out of it. And we live in such a universe, or one of these universes, and that's the reason why induction via Solomonov works. And yes, okay, I mean, is it practically relevant? Yes, Solomonov is computable, we have to approximate that. But we do that all the time. Look, we have data compressors. The CTW is a practical data compressor, yeah, or related ones. And they work quite well for essentially all files you have on your system, except those which you specially designed, namely pure write random noise, which cannot be compressed. Yeah. So uh, this idea works for essentially all files, although we know that on a uniformity assumption, um, most files cannot be compressed. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I uh, can, can you continue your question at the worst, please? Uh, we just, would just uh, like to ask one final question, <laughs> and then we'll close the session because it's getting late. Thank you. Discuss it offline. So, um, my question goes to Salim, Stephen, and Sergey. And since we're on this whole issue right now of levels of consistency, um, I'd like you three also to uh, address these issues, how this, how um, your thoughts and how your systems might handle or not um, this these different levels of uh, consistency. Yeah, I would add uh, either consistency or approximate consistency. Right. Probably approximate. <laughs> <laughs> well, my understanding of uh, inconsistency is more close uh, what he said about paraconsistent uh, logic. Uh, I think paraconsistency um, 
uh, depends on, on the language that you use. For instance, in propositional logic, it's very clear. It's the absence of the models, if you have information. So if you have absence of models, then uh, in probability, it means you know, the, the distribution is not normalized uh, if you have uh, information. Uh, now, the way, the way we deal with inconsistencies, to, at least in the presentation, is to weaken the information. Uh, and uh, our aim is to restore consistency, to recover consistency. In this case, we try to weaken. Uh, if you have two information that are contradictory, uh, and the one way to do it is to try to weaken each, uh, each sources uh, and take into account also plausibility uh, relation to Basically, if you have a set of inconsistent, info, set of inconsistent information, uh, there are different ways to, to restore inconsistency. One way is to weaken by forgetting variables, for instance. Other way is to select a subset of maximal consistent information and to consider all of them. There are different strategies. So do you have to um, be completely consistent in the limit, uh, say, as in Marcus, or is probably approximately consistent uh, consistent enough yeah um, uh, I, uh, for, why, for, for what I understand from from historic is more a matter of how can I redefine uh, it's more in the system I think and not about the information this is uh, this is my uh, my feeling and in, in my case um, I think uh, consistency is quite classical I, that view all pieces of information as um, constraints in a particular world. Um, so, so if you say X, okay. Um, so if you say X is similar to Y, that that's a constraint on the type of models that you can have. Uh, if you say uh, typically objects satisfy X satisfy Y, that's not a constraint. Um, so. Um, Typically, these constraints will be inconsistent, and, and restoring consistency would amount to relaxing some of these constraints uh, in one way or another. So, so standard form of consistency, like in a uh, constraint satisfaction. Yeah, but uh, uh, our work was about uh, MDP environment, so it's not so connected. <laughs> consistent, consistent. So, uh, I guess it's also about the convergence of the values. But, um, I mean, what do you mean? The key values of the algorithm for learning. Yes, yes, but what do you mean? Okay, uh, I didn't catch what exactly you mean. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> any last comments by one of the participants? No? Okay, so uh, thank you very much, everyone. Let's thank the speaker again. So we are closing this session. Uh, um, probability or not, uh, handling uncertainty. Uh, don't, we need, don't we need to have a vote on probability? Or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <That's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's saying uh, probability is uh, should be used for AGI? <laughs> who's, who's saying probability should not be used for AGI? Uh, but this problem, this question is <laughs> <laughs> by us. Okay. Now you ask I actually use probability a lot in my system. I just don't use it as a foundation of the whole thing. Okay. Uh, I use it for small problem here or there. Uh, so I'm not saying that it should not be used. That's the first one, even for me. So what, 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 what question would you pose? Uh, you ask a question yeah. your question. Yeah. Who think probability theory does not pro uh, propose uh, solid uh, foundation for the whole ADI system? Who thinks that it provides sound foundations for whole of all of AGI? Uh, what kind of probability theory? <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we'll uh, stop here for today. Uh, there's a reception at six, I think. Uh, across the hallway, right, right there. Yeah, the reception is across the whole way. Uh, another uh, announcement is someone left uh, a sunglass in the room. Or, oh, okay, it's already fine. Okay, we'll see you at the reception.